So the background is that um, we were confronted with instant restenosis, which is of course less frequent now with the drug eluting stents. But uh, I mean, uh, we usually uh, stented those patients with a new drug eluting stent. And I was confronted with a question from one of the manufacturers whether I would see any way of getting the drug eluting balloon in, in the Netherlands. And I said, well, why don't we do a trial? And so we designed a trial for instant restenosis, like the other trials for instant restenosis using the drug eluting balloon. So this is about five, six years ago now. So we designed a trial we're doing with eight centers in the Netherlands. Uh, we looked for instant restenosis of both bare metal stent instant, re instant restenosis and drug eluting stent instant, re instant restenosis. The balloon is a, a semi-compliant balloon uh, with the drug paclitaxel, uh, which is a, um, used for chemotherapy and stuff, and it helps to reduce the uh, intima hyperplasia, and with that way it reduces uh, the, the redo of the instant restenosis. Yeah, very, very briefly, uh, 278 patients with any type of instant restenosis, both bare metal stent and drug eluting stent restenosis were included in the trial. Half patients with bare metal stent instant restenosis, half patients with drug eluting stent instant restenosis. And one-on-one -on -one randomization to the sequent please balloon or design stent, with primary endpoint of being uh, in segment MLD at six months. The findings were that uh, from the, uh, the primary endpoint was that at six months was that the MLD in both arms was equal. So non-inferiority was largely met. Uh, I was actually expecting this, quite frankly, from the very first moment, so it was not a surprise. But uh, another finding, which I do find interesting, is something I'd like to talk about, is that uh, what you saw is that the acute gain, immediately after the initial procedure, the index procedure, you saw that the acute gain in a drug eluting stent arm was quite considerably larger than in the drug eluting balloon. So, and this gain was completely evaporated over the course of six months. And we know actually that there is, uh, although the design stands, of course, excellence, the gold standard, but it does have some late loss, specifically in the first 12 months. So I actually think that in this trial, if we would have done a angio a little bit later, um, I actually imagine that, that the results for a truck loading balloon would even be better. At least that's my take on it. So there were several limitations. Uh, first of all, it took us five years to enroll, which is strange because in the Netherlands, there is only large centers, uh, so yes, they must have been biased. We didn't keep a record, so we just got 270 patients out. Um, second limitation is that comparison to other trials, our MLD was actually quite smaller, so I think that for the bigger instant restenosis, the principal investigators said, well, I'll just do a balloon, a normal balloon, and we don't want to enroll either with a stent or with a drug eluting balloon. Um, so, but I think it actually makes it even more interesting because it's the smaller diameter instant restenosis that actually are a real challenge. And, and additionally is the fact that there was not a specific protocol how to prepare the lesion before deploying the final therapy. And also post dilatation of the stent was not mandatory. So there are some procedural characteristics that, do are, that are limiting the outcome. There is already a European recommendation, class 1 recommendation, to use the drug eluting balloon for instant restenosis. So it's a class 1A recommendation. But um, I think what we see in our lab is that over the course of the, uh, of the uh, trial, we have uh, actually, um, we actually took that on. So we now routinely, for instant restenosis, always use a drug eluting balloon. We never uh, first touch on the stent for a stent. We first deploy a drug eluting balloon uh, for instant restenosis, and only when they recur, we then can have uh, we can then consider a second stand. But actually, that happens so rare. Uh, so I think um, so that's what changes. So we used to do stand for stand, and now we do balloon for instant restenosis. So there's a, a couple of things. First of all, uh, the drug eluting balloon is not FDA approved, so it's not used in the U.S. Of course, it has no consequences for Europeans, but uh, it's interesting how that is possible. Uh, there's a trajectory on the way there to, to see whether that's possible. Um, 
I think um, this balloon really offers um, um, a new indication where if you don't, if you have not used the balloon, you would not consider using it. Uh, what we've seen over the years in our lab is that whereas we initially only use the balloon for the trial, for instant restenosis, we gradually use it more frequently for smaller vessels where you don't want to leave in a stent or for bifurcations where you then have to do complex stentings whereas you can now perhaps have just one stent and perhaps do the side branch with a drug eluding balloon. So I think uh, having this uh, tool in your armamentarium really expands the possibilities to use this device. Um, so I think it really has changed to some extent our way of work uh, in, in our labs.